Good morning, everyone. I hope your cup is full and you are ready to join us for cup chat. Oh, Romy, everybody's got a cup this morning. So exciting. So before I introduce you, my special guest, I'm going to introduce you where my cup is from today. So today my cup is from New York. Like I said, many, many moons ago, I drink from a different cup from a different place every time. My sister sends them back. So it's kind of a cool thing. So New York is where my cup is from. So if you are a New York birder today, I am representing you. And joining us today um, are, are two of our two more of our professional guides for birding the border. Um, and that is Romy Swanson with and Katie oh, Smith Hicks. Oh my goodness, I'm losing this this morning. So how are y'all doing this morning? Doing well, thank you. Doing good. Good. And Katie, you're joining us from Arkansas? I'm Arkansas, um, in Bismarck, Arkansas, just south of Hot Springs. That's where I live. So you are traveling a little way to get to Birding the Border. They kind of go ahead and give us your background and where you um, maybe started birding. Okay, well, I work uh, for Texas a m Natural Resources Institute. Uh, and obviously I work remotely. Um, so I work from home. Uh, I started birding uh, way back in college. I had a vertebrate zoology class um, and the teacher was an ornithologist. And one of the things she had us do was uh, uh, learn bird calls for extra credit and so she gave us a CD of bird calls of 100 bird calls and for everyone you learned you got extra credit and I went home and I I learned all 100 calls just like that because I just really enjoyed it <laughs> so um, I, I learned that I had an ear for for the different bird noises and once I learn those calls when I was out and about. I heard those birds everywhere and I knew what I was hearing and I was fascinated. And um, I did a little project with her um, on red tail hawks. And then um, I worked at a zoo in the bird department up in Omaha, Nebraska. And then when I graduated, um, I ended up, uh, after I looked around trying to figure out what I want to do, because um, I went to vet school, but I, um, I ended up going to Australia and doing uh, a research project there on uh, hooded parrots. And uh, the people that I was there with were huge twitchers. <laughs> they were big birders. And all we did on our downtime was go look for birds, which Australia is a pretty awesome place to go just look for birds. So that's what we did all the time. And it was pretty much from then for that point for her that I was just you know I like to just go birding because I found it fun and relaxing and uh and I've been doing it for fun ever since so and I do it for work too <laughs> so I ended up in graduate school and, and getting my master's um studying black cat vireos and I uh, continue to do bird work um in my PhD and then um not for my PhD but while I was doing my PhD and and I and I even uh, do bird work still now here and again so well, we're excited to have you join us. And so I think one of the really interesting pieces about you, Katie, is when you did your master's work or your PhD work um, on black cat vireos, you did that at one of our birding sites. Yes, yes, I was at Devil's River State Natural Area. And then I also had some sites at Dolan Falls Preserve. So I spent two years, uh, two, two summers out there, March through July, um, yeah, studying. Sorry, my blue jays are really loud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> studying black cat vireos down there, and I love it in Southwest Texas. I just fell in love with the place, and um, so yeah, I was very excited to get the call to come help with this because it's got a big special place in my heart um, down there. The great birds, great area. So Good. we're excited to have you, Romy. You know, most people in Texas kind of know who you are, just a little bit. So why most Texas birders, so why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started, and I'm going to hate to tell you this, Romy, but the short version. We love you, and we know you can talk, but we only have 30 minutes today. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, my, my story is not completely dissimilar from uh, Catherine's. My, mine is, um, I was working on my master's thesis. I uh, was studying reptiles and amphibians, and uh, as part of my thesis, I had to uh, replicate survey effort throughout the seasons of the year, and as most people know, reptiles and amphibians 
are a little less active during the winter and that caused for a little bit of, bird, uh, of boredom while I was running through my, my survey efforts. So I started to pay attention to the little flitting uh, birds and bobs up in the trees that didn't have any leaves, which made it easier for uh, to study them. And, um, and because part of my master's thesis was uh, being able to recognize frog call by their call, I started to learn the bird birds by their call. And from there, I found out I had a, a bit of an ear for it, for, for ear ID of birds. And um, from there, I just sort of launched because there, there are so many different species of birds um, and they can be very representative of the landscapes and ecology from which they're associated. And, and I found that to be very interesting. And, um, and, and so those are sorts of associations um, create a fascination with me, caused me to start traveling throughout the state and, 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 and learning a little bit about the ecology of all the different birds and where they occur. There, that's my, my Wikipedia Short summary, you know, pre, pre-flash. Well, we appreciate that, Romy. Um, and, and kind of talking about, we're excited to host Burning the Border. And, you know, um, one of our main things about Burning the Border, which y'all know, is that we want it to be an experience for everyone. And part of that experience is growing as a birder, we believe. And so today we're gonna have you reveal one of your secrets as a guide. Are you ready? We wanna know what y'all think is some, like a, a good ID trick or tip that we commonly overlook. Um, something that's maybe not right there on the top of their brain um, it's not color because you can't use that one. I mean, everyone uses color. So something a little more subtle that maybe we don't always think about. Catherine, you want to jump in on that one? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, no, the noises and the calls, and it's something that you can do before you go out there. I don't know if that's if that's allowed, but um, there are several websites you can go on to to learn bird calls. And um, they'll even quiz you. And I think the Cornell website allow you to do that. And you'll have a huge leg up if you kind of go over there and listen to bird calls and go out there. Because what will happen is you will hear birds that you wouldn't have even known were there otherwise. Um, so you can go out birding all day and see a few birds, but you'll hear and find three times as many if you can hear them and you know what you're listening to. And once you start listening, even if you don't know what it is, then you can follow it and you can see it. So sometimes they'll just make little noises. Um, so I think, I think birding by ear is my the way I bird. That's the way I find birds. So that's just my little tip, um, you know. And you can go and learn that ahead of time for you're out there. And I think it's a little more distinctive than you know some, some of the things you see when you look through your binoculars. <laughs> so that's just my my the way I do it. Are you going to be giving extra credit to the, your people in your group who study their bird calls and have all 100 oh, memorized? Yes, yes. I'll make a list. I think I can do that. <laughs> I'm learning Katie, the bird calls. I know now. one of the ones you're talking about, there's, and I can put these links down below for people that are watching, but one of them I know on the um, Cornell Bird Academy, there's the one that you can kind of listen. It will give you three songs and it shows you what they look like. And so for mm -hmm. somebody like me that I kind of struggled with just listen, learning by ear to see that sonogram of how the, how the song looks like can be really helpful. And so I know that's one of them, but then I think I'll have to find the other. Do you know off the top of your head, is it the Macaulay Library where you can limit to a particular region and then do kind of a quiz that's similar? It's been a few years, but that sounds right. I think that's okay. that's the one in the Macaulay Library. I'm gonna have to look that up. Look that up. I know that in the Macaulay Library you can sort by where you are, which is nice because sometimes birds kind of have a little bit of an accent depending on where they're located. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you want to know what they sound like in Texas specifically, or like in the Del Rio area, they may not have recordings for all the parts of Texas, but that can be helpful. Um, but there's one of them too where you can quiz yourself and you can kind of say birds in my area and I'll have to be sure to find that for people unless maybe Romy knows which one I'm I wonder if you're about. thinking about the Thayer's birding software. I haven't tried that one. one. I've never tried that one, but I know that that one's out there too. Well, I, and I that know one that was right free around for a little while here, right? What's that? That one was free for a little, maybe that's what you were about to say. Yeah, there was, that's what I was about to say is um, Thayer made it uh, available for free right around the beginning of COVID. Um, so it's it, it's and it's a very powerful software for learning uh, bird calls and um, bird ID by visual 
my photographs and range maps and stuff like that. I'm gonna look that one up right now so I can put that link on our Facebook too. And another little tip with this hearing the songs. Sorry, that's my duck back there. Another little tip with hearing the songs. Um, if you, you know, if you, you can visualize it um, and then you can also come up with little sayings. Um, that's how I, me and a few of my friends started to learn bird calls is you can give them a little like, you know, chickadee says, I'm a cutie, like those kind of things. And um, that kind of helps you remember it because you, you give words to it, right? And um, so uh, that's, that's just a little tip. If you have a hard time kind of associating birds with, uh, I'm sorry, my, I have a whole farm of chickens and ducks. Oh, and here's one of them. Um, so yeah, so putting little words to it um, will help you a lot. So that's a good way to start. And I think that's a great tip, Katie. And the one thing that I would add, as I was learning songs, I struggled a little bit because there's certain species that you can find that people will commonly say, well, this is how people remember that. And a lot of times those weren't helpful to me because somebody else had come up with them. And to me, it didn't sound like that. And especially like our wide-eyed vireos in this area, some people say it sounds like they're saying quick with the beer check. Our ones here do not say that. Like they just say something different. It's not the right tempo. And so making up my own was really helpful. And not to say that you can't, that sometimes other people's aren't useful, um, but it can be really helpful to make up your own. Yes. Oh, look at the chicken. Oh, that's a pretty one. This is Mona. Oh, Mona. Oh, she's cute. Okay, she's more of a pet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Romy, what is your maybe underutilized ID trick? Well, I, you know, what I suggest folks, particularly folks that are kind of starting off um, or don't have a, a deep well of experience to pull from is to make sure you're carrying some, some form of field guide whether it's a paper copy or, or something on your phone, but refer to um, the range maps whenever, whenever you're, you're, you're coming up with an ID or suggesting an ID. A lot of times the answer is a lot simpler than, than, than folks might be making it out. Oh, this bird that I saw in poor lighting through these, you know, th through these binoculars that may not be the, the, the best for the conditions looked just like this picture from the book but this picture is from the Aleutian Islands of Alaska only, you know, the range. And so it's just not very likely that that bird's going to occur in uh, the Devil's River Valley of Valverde County. So refer to the range maps and, and um, you know, let's, let's eliminate some things that are unlikely and look for things that are, that are more likely first. Uh, not to say that rarities don't happen and vagrant, vagrancy doesn't occur, but um, certainly uh, it's, it's a lot more difficult to, to suggest an ID that's so far out of, out of range than, um, than not so. Well, and Romy, I'm going to challenge you there. You, yeah. you, you must not have watched our last birding cup chat because we talked about field guides. And Did I went you? back to my elementary school days. All right. So if I'm a beginner birder, and I have no clue what I'm looking at. And I have to, it's like using a dictionary. I can't spell either. Teacher says, use the dictionary, find how to spell it. If I could spell it, I could find it in the dictionary. But I can't spell it to find it in the dictionary. So if what if you are starting out, you've got your field guide, and you have no clue where to start? You start on page one and read the introductory material. There's a lot oh. of a lot of great tools right there up front that people skip right through looking looking at the actual pic pictures of birds. I, I mean, honestly, I think that um, a person could acquire an incredible education just reading the introductory material of various field guides, um, which obviously, and and I'm I'm certainly guilty of it too. We all skip, but there's a lot of tips and tricks in there um, that someone a lot smarter than I, I have written. <laughs> That's a really good point, Romy, because that is something that I, the first time I used a field guide, I hadn't looked at the introduction material. And I remember the first time I looked at the introduction material and I was like, whoa, like there's so much good stuff in here. And it really truly does walk you through like parts of identification and a lot of them are just really well written. So that I think is a good tip for beginners is if you're going out and looking through field guides, and I said last week, but I really prefer the paper ones, you know, like go to a bookstore if you can and open a couple ones and see which ones you like and then take it home and read the introduction now and not right before you get to burning the border or you know not having not read the introduction at all yeah. 
Well, I still go back to I can't spell. It's hard to find stuff I can't spell. I hate it. But at least with birds, they're grouped like a little bit. Yeah. Well. Like if you know it's a duck, like most people can tell if something's a duck versus not a duck, you know to go to the duck section. Whereas well, like if you're that is positive that your word starts with an A, you go to the A section. It narrows it down lots a little of bit. A's. With, there are with lots birds, of A's. right. Right. Thankfully, instead of, you know, however many hundreds of thousands of words starting with A's, there's only mm -hmm. a handful of ducks. But you, you guys do some incredible work on your videos with the, you know, the shape and form and this and that. So, I mean, you know, just using the various tools available, but the field guide's one of them, but it's one of a, of a suite um, to get comfortable with, with ID. Aww, well, thank you for the compliment, Romy. We appreciate that. All right. So moving on as we keep cupping through cup chat is let's talk a little bit. And we asked our guides this last week as well is for those people out there, those birders out there who have not birded with a professional guide, why do, why do, why is it such a big deal to me to share with the world how awesome y'all are and why, what's the benefit of going birding with you guys? Um, just to put that into perspective of why we truly find it important here at Birding with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension to have a professional guide go out on all of our programs. So Romy, you want to take off? I know we've done ladies first this whole time, but you know, you are the only man here. We'll let you go first. Sure. Thank you. Um, I think that, you know, you, you get uh, some incredible benefits from, from working with a guide. And, um, and of course, uh, a guide like in, in a festival, like burning the border, um, it, it becomes pretty cost effective because uh, hiring a guide outright can be pretty expensive and not to mention all the travel and, and stuff. But uh, you, you get to learn, you know, from someone that has a, a hopefully a deep well of experience, um, familiarity with the with the area that you're birding. And um, all of that experience, you know, you, you get access to it. Um, if, particularly if you're a beginning birder, you, you're going to learn some of the pneumotics, some of those birds that are seeing their names, like the chickadee that we were visiting about earlier. You're going to learn about um, habitat associations, you know, wh which birds do you expect to find in this particular patch of habitat. And, uh, it, and I think that, uh, you know, that exposure makes everybody better, um, anybody on a different level, just to see things through a different lens, uh, somebody else's perspective, um, may be, uh, maybe something that illuminates you on your path. Um, and so there, I mean, there's, there's an incredible amount of value, but I, I, I like the festivals because, um, you know, they're cost effective. You can, you get access to multiple guides, um, pick your own adventure and, um, and, and there's, you know, really no better way to learn than by doing with someone knowledgeable. Yeah, that's a good point. I just want to highlight something Romy said there is that every time I bird with someone different who knows more than I do, I learn something different. And so Katie's style of birding will be different from Romy's, from Brian and Martina that we talked with last week. Um, there's things that they'll all have in common. And so you hear those tricks multiple times from multiple people and that really helps. And then there's perspectives that they're gonna have that are different. And so I do think that's one of the fun things about birding the border is you can get different guides and, and learn in those different ways. And now I will mention for our beginner track, you've got the same guide for three days if you're on that track. But I think that's nice because then that guide also gets to know you as well. And so they can he can kind of learn you know, where you're at and the nuances of what you're comfortable with and where your experience is. And that kind of gives them a little bit more hands-on focus with you, so. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I'll follow up with that. Um, I agree with everything Rami said. Um, you do, for me, every time I bird with somebody different, I learn something new. And um, I didn't, you know, you don't realize what you're not doing until you're with somebody who does it. And um, so, yeah, you, you learn a lot that way. And I want to say too, with the birding on the border, you know, you go birding and you get to see lots of birds, lots of awesome birds, but um, you also, um, depending on the guide, get to learn different things about um, the area, um, kind of the ecology of the area. Um, so I think, you know, to get to know a bird, you need to get to know their ecology. So it's not just about looking at a bird and identifying it. Um, if you learn something about that bird, which a bird guide can help you do, 
if you learn something about their ecology, you're more likely to remember that bird, I think. Um, and it's, it's a, it's really fun to learn, um, to learn about the different birds and not just identify them. Now I say that I've met twitchers that don't care about learning anything about a bird. They just want to put their eyes on it and mark it off and go on. But I think you get a lot out of, out of um, learning something. Um, so also about the, the area, the properties, um, how the properties, the history of the properties. Um, I mean, you can get a lot out of that too. And birding on the border offers that and it's, it's really cool. So. Katie, you jumped right into my next question. So I'm gonna let you finish it up, okay? So we talk a little bit about, um, we're excited to have y'all obviously uh, be guys at Birding the Border and, and talking about maybe one thing that you are looking forward to or excited about with the Birding the Border experience. Um, and I think one thing you hit on the head was the history and, and learning about the area because we're not, we're not going to every birding hotspot in, in Valverde County. Actually, I would argue that our hot, we're not even going to some hotspots in Valverde County because the places we are going are private areas or restricted areas that people can't get to. So they can't really become a huge birding hotspot because they're not birded frequently in terms of just having regular public access. Um, so that's something we're super excited to share. And I think, um, Katie, one thing you said that really hits home for me is that I'm so excited to share some of the history of our local ranchers and then landowners here in the area. So that's why I'm excited. So now that I've answered my own question, Katie, what kind of, what's maybe one thing that you're really looking forward to um, at Burning the Border? And if you default to your last answer, uh, you can do that as well. Yeah, um, talking about the local properties um, is it's always fun. It's fun to meet the landowners. They have great stories, um, and just learning about the properties. But honestly, what I'm looking forward to is uh, meeting the birders. I enjoy um, meeting them, getting to know them, and uh, you know where are they from? What's their history of birding? You know, I think it's just so fun to meet people that are also interested in birding. So um, I, up here in Arkansas. Um, I don't meet a lot of people that are just, I haven't, I haven't gotten to the circles of birding circles here yet. And I'm kind of rural, so it's kind of hard to get to Little Rock for that, because um, that's where most of them are. So it'll be nice to be amongst other people who have similar interests as me. So that's another perk is you, you could meet, uh, you can meet other people that, that like to bird and make friends for life. Um, so, I mean, I, I think that's a huge draw to the, you know, you're spending time with these people, going out to these properties, learning new things. Um, but yeah, so learning about the properties, learning about the history of the area, and um, and meeting people similar, that have similar just what I'm looking forward to. That's a good one. Romy, same question. What are you looking forward to? Well, I have to say that I, I'm just so excited about this this festival and the work that you guys have done and connecting opportunities to see uh, birds on private lands on on ranches that are stewarded by some of some of the best landowners in the state. Um, another thing I'm really excited about is that you know we have we have so much representation through birding festivals and, and, and birding hot spots on the eastern half of the state, but so so few. I mean, we have some iconic landscapes on the western side of the state, but such limited access. And you, you all working with your your community of landowners have opened up some gates that otherwise uh, many folks may never be able to get behind. So to be able to hear the stories of stewardship and conservation and management tied to the birds that we're actually seeing, the stories from the landowners, and to do it all in a place that otherwise many of us may not visit regularly. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an incredible opportunity and, and that's purely why I am most excited to work with you all in this particular festival. Well, thank you. I'm excited that you're all like, y'all are excited about the getting on those private lands that we've worked so hard and diligently with those landowners. Maureen, you want to add anything to that as I give you five, as we wrap up in five minutes? Um, I totally had a thought and I lost it. Say, say your wrap up and then I'll say mine. Oh, <laughs> That's uh, great. Chuck me under the bus. Yeah. Well, so we will kind of wrap it up today and we'll talk a little bit about where Romy and Katie are guiding. So Romy um, is going to be guiding at Fort Clark Springs. He's going to be guiding at the Zuber Beeler Ranch. This is one of our privately owned ranches and um, that has very, 
has no access other at this point other than through averting the border. Um, so Zuber Wheeler's Ranch is on the far western part of the county, and this is going to be more of your um, desert birds. Um, it's a vastly different habitat than I'd say anything else. Wouldn't you, Maureen? Maybe similar-ish to Devil's River State Natural Area, but heavy on the ish. Yeah, very I mean, heavy on the ish. Pretty different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fort Clark is on the easternmost part of uh, the of Kenny County, and that's a privately uh, private gated community that we're going to get to go in and bird. And then Romy's also leading on the Devil's River State Natural Area, which is our feature trip this year, um, to see uh, our feature bird, which is the hybrid Perula. And the, you know, Devil's River State Natural Area is a public place that you could go and bird. However, I've got several tips and tricks here as to why you want to go birding with us at Devil's River State Natural Area. And Romy, you can thank me later. One, we will be driving, driving past the gate. No walking. Well, there is walking, but no walking miles and miles and miles. And then the second piece of that is we have the unique opportunity to bird at some restricted areas uh, that are not open to the public that you, you don't typically get to go. So we're going to be seeing some different parts of that state natural area um, where the birds are good that typically you don't get to go. So those doors, uh -huh. Romy. I know you can thank me later. I know you're excited now. And Katie, you're going to be guiding at Dobbs, uh, Dobbs Ranch, which is, I think you also did some of your research there, correct? Um, I, have done, I helped another graduate student do her, her research out there. So I've been out there several times to, to do surveys and research and ban. So. so we're excited about that property. And so Katie's going to really be trying to help you find the Golden Sheik at Dobbs Run and Black Cap Vireos. And then Katie is also going to be uh, guiding to the Rosa Road, which is a beautiful landscape in Kinney County. Um, and it is, um, it's a unique spot that you wouldn't normally find unless you went hunting for it. And then the last place Katie is going to be guiding is McKenna Ranch. So this is going to be our private ranch um, in the northern, um, northern part of Valverde County. Um, and we saw black caps there the other day. Uh, very buntings. Help me out, Maureen. It's our owl spot. Oh, Not that we'll be out there at night, but there yeah. that's where we saw the western and the eastern screech owl when we were out there with Brian. So we're excited about those spots. Um, if you have any questions about any of our locations or our guides, make sure you reach out to us. We're more than happy to make suggestions or help you pick what you want um, or recommend any of our fabulous guides based upon what your level is or where you want to go. So Maureen, now yeah. you, you find your thoughts? Yeah, I remembered, yeah. But I was gonna say, Katie made me think of it um, when she was just talking about the history and the, you know, the areas is that all of our guides, something that we have specifically looked for when we were looking for guides is all of our guides and our birding buddies are overall naturalists. And they're not just interested in checking birds off the list. So if you are interested in getting as many species as you can, don't worry, because we have that too. And I think last week, Brian and Martina were debating a little bit about which of them was going to get the most species. And actually, Romy, you're in on this because it's really kind of a site debate because I think we've got Fort Clark Springs on the one hand and then the Duck Pond. I think those are going to be our two top contenders for the most species. So Romy, since you've got a day at Fort Clark Springs, you could be one of the ones to potentially bring in um, the most species. But you could um, be Brian. I, you could be Brian, yeah, yeah. At his uh, own he, home you know, turf. Yeah, right, Why? that's where, <laughs> that's where he grew don't up. Don't do so, that, yeah. I don't want to see him cry. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think all of our, um, all of our guys really have an appreciation for the area and more than just the birds, but the, you know, the whole ecosystem. And, um, you know, Romy mentioned that he was studying herps when he's got into birds and Romy is an excellent herper. Um, and I think Emily is Katie paired with Terry. Yes, Katie's is birding okay. buddy is also okay. a herper. Katie's birding buddy is a big herper and also knows, I think all the plants. I don't know that I've asked him a plant yet that he doesn't know what it is. And so, yeah, so, and he does the, um, butterflies and, and dragonflies too. So a lot of our guys just have that broad interest 
that will give you a big appreciation for the area. So even if you're a beginner birder, but you love, you know, flowering plants or butterflies, or there's those other interests, our guides will appreciate those as well um, and help you learn about some of those things that are in the area too. Oh my gosh, I wish we had more than 30 minutes because you just made me think of something. Speaking of Dobbs Run, where Katie is guiding, they have several, in so the golden cheeks there, but they also have snow bells, which are endangered plant mm -hmm. species. Yep. So. They're at Dolan Falls too. Mm -hmm. They're at Dolan Falls. River. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, we, and I will, I guess we should give the heads up and the hope. So typically on our Devil's River trips, um, we have been fortunate enough to partner with the Texas uh, or the Nature Conservancy to be able to go on and bird at the Nature Conservancy property. And while we have really enjoyed that partnership, we are still uh, discussing the ability to have that partnership here in 2021 with birding the border um, due to COVID regulations. And so we're very hopeful that um, by next April that that's something that they can allow us to do. Um, but we've, we've really appreciated that partnership and we're very hopeful that we'll be able to continue that partnership. But at this point, you know, as with most things in the world, there is a big question mark. Um, if you think that uh, we know many people might have questions about traveling um, or what we are going to do in light of COVID-19 and especially in terms of April in 2021, we have already addressed the majority of those concerns with our administration and our local officials. Um, and that is at the bottom of our website. And we do feel very confident, barring any major changes, that we will be able to host Birding the Border 2021 um, in light of the, the pandemic. So if you're questioning or have questions about how we're going to handle those, those are on our website. Um, and we do ask that y'all understand that this is a fluid situation. And so things could change. Um, and we, we're hoping to have a great Birding the Border 2021 um, with whatever regulations we might have to follow. Oh, look, she joined us. Oh, Mona, she's so cute. So anyways, have a great Wednesday. Thank you, Romy and Katie, for joining us. Next week, we will be joined by, Maureen, I know you're excited about this. Yeah, I am. Oh, um, our, the guy who's leading our beginner track is Bill Sane, and Emily and I went to go out and um, do some birding with him last week, two weeks ago. Um, we went to the duck pond, and that was super fun. Um, and then Dorian Anderson, who's going to be our keynote speaker, he, a lot of birders know him as the guy who did a big year all across the U.S. only from bike. Um, he did not get in any motorized vehicle for an entire year and got, I believe, over 600 species all across the U.S. Um, just using, you know, the power of his own body to get around. Um, which is pretty incredible so <laughs> yes he's very fit <laughs> um and so the and he's also he's leading our photography focused um tours and so the two of them kind of our our special focus tours um are going to be speaking with us next week so anyways well thank you so much everybody we hope you had a great morning cup of coffee thank you again katie and romy for joining us and we'll talk to everybody soon